I have this nagging feeling. I have felt it for as long as I remember. Seldom I have been able to articulate this feeling into thoughts, so I could understand why I have this feeling, let alone explaining this feeling to others. The only thing I could make out of this feeling was, something is wrong. I was born in late 1974 on an island way up in the north, called Iceland. In my childhood, I was given an image of the world that was being fixed after the horrific times of World War II, with the leadership of the UN and the USA. At the time of my birth, Iceland was an independent nation with its own fishing industry. My mom and dad and my older sister lived and worked in that industry. By the year 2000, this industry was almost gone. The quota regulations made sure that the right to fish ended up in the hands of a very few people, who then sold this right to foreign companies for an incredible amount of money. The right to fish, <laughs> I would think that is my birthright. Today the industry is dead, just like with the car and steel industry in the US and Europe. Why is it in the West most industry is going away? After the Cold War, everything looked like we were going to have peace in our world along with the freedoms we have. Freedoms our earlier generations fought for. We were free. I believed this. I loved it. I was gonna have fun. And we had fun. For about a decade. Then one day happened. Holy fuck! Oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus fucking Christ! I was shocked, just like everyone else on this planet. I was angry seeing almost 3,000 people being killed. I saw it again and again, because the media had nothing else to talk about for the weeks in the aftermath. I got hypnotized. I felt hate and more hate. Hate towards those they told me again and again who were responsible. Bin Laden and those terrorists in a faraway land. I said, let's just drop the bomb on those fuckers. I was thinking like this for four years. In the meantime, I moved to Denmark, a nation with many immigrants from the Middle East. I learned that the image I had been given on the Muslim community was a lie. The image I had was created from the mainstream media, which was my only source of information at the time. Then in 2005, I got a connection to the internet. My first computer in five years. I started searching for information connected to the date 9-11. What I found was completely different than what I learned from the mainstream media. Many questions I heard for the first time, questions that I could not create on my own just by reading the morning newspaper or watching the nightly news. Questions like, where was NORAD on this day? Where is the airplane at the Pentagon? Why is the hole in the Pentagon smaller than the airplane? Why did the towers fall in freefall speed? Why did Building 7 collapse? The list is long. With all the evidence I had seen on the 9-11 incident that broke down the official story in so many ways, I started to believe my nagging feeling. There is definitely something wrong. I started to question everything. I asked myself if this 9-11 event is a conspiracy what else is being hidden? What other events or situations could be manipulated? What if our whole society is there to serve the few? My nagging feeling said yes. J. Edgar Hoover said, The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. The American mind simply has not come to a realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. 
So I asked myself, what in our society has full power over my actions? I found one thing that has way too much power over my actions. A power that decides if I can make a feature length film or not. A power that decides if I go on vacation or not. A power that decides if I sell myself or not. A power that decides if I have a home or not. A power that can decide if I eat or not. This power is the monetary system. Our money. Everything rolls around it. Everyone needs it. And every decision in life today is made with the monetary situation in mind. So I asked, where does the money come from? What is money? At first, I believed that our government is making this money for the people it serves. I was wrong. Then we have the money. What you do is you go to the bank and you borrow money that has never, does not, and will never exist called credit, and then you, you mortgage your house to it, you mortgage your car to it, your land to it, your business to it, and if you don't pay back money that doesn't exist called credit, then the people that have lent you that non-existent money get your car and your business and your house. Yes, that makes sense. And this money scam where they get us into debt by borrowing money that has never, does not, will never exist is in the very DNA of society. It controls choice, controls maneuverability, or if we allow it to, controls society. And who controls money? Controls society. Who controls money? A tiny few people, as we'll see. But oh, you don't want to talk about that. Hey, honey, quick, on the Jerry Springer show, this man's going to hit his girlfriend. Quick, quick. Watch this. Shut up. For a long time, we have had two sets of laws. The law of the land and the law of the water. The law of the land is the law of any land and they are different between different places. You can do certain things in Denmark that you cannot do in Russia and vice versa. The law of the water is called Maritime Admiralty Law. These laws are above any law of any land. These laws came about centuries ago when ships sailed the seas with all sorts of goods between different places. When our monetary system started to become worldwide, maritime admiralty law became the law of banking. They are also the laws of churches and courts. When you stand inside a bank, the laws you know in your land no longer apply. There are different laws for you when you stand in a bank or when you stand outside of it. You can see in many banks and courts the maritime flag of the nation it is in. Maritime flags of nations on ships are there to tell what laws apply to that ship. Same with a bank. In the US, the maritime flag is almost the same flag as the US flag. The only difference is that this flag has a golden border. Notice that every US soldier has that flag on its arm and not the regular US flag. This should tell you who those soldiers are really working for. The, the world of Admiralty is it's a concept and it's a philosophy. There's two kinds of law in the world. There's civil law and there's the law of water and money. Well, we, we have our common law system where collective groups of people come together and they agree to, to follow particular behavioral patterns. However, the banking system or the, the banksters or gangsters or whatever you want to call them have collectively through thousands of years have set up a situation where they can manipulate people to superimpose a, um, a legal system that is not based entirely on law, it's based on commerce. And so this, this artificial let's pretend construct has basically been superimposed over our uh, law of our land. 
I learned the rules of modern banking. It is called fractional reserve banking system. Every bank in the world only has to have a fraction of the amount that the bank has in store to loan out to other people. That is, a bank can loan out to you a hundred dollars when it only has ten dollars in store. And those ten dollars is other people's money that they keep in their computer vaults. Today we live with fiat money. What does fiat money mean? A currency that a government has declared to be legal tender, despite the fact that it has no real value and is not backed by any reserves. Historically, most currencies were based on physical commodities such as gold or silver, but fiat money is solely based on faith money as religion. This money is printed by private organizations all over the world and loaned to governments with interests. These interests are the debt of most nations today. This made me think. Money is the main brainwashed tool. Mayor Rothschild said, give me control of a nation's money and I care not who makes the laws. The Federal Reserve, the central bank of the USA, is not federal. It is a privately owned company set up in England which nobody knows who owns, nor does it have any reserves. Woodrow Wilson was the US president that signed into law the Federal Reserve Act in 1913 something he regretted later in his life. Woodrow Wilson said on his deathbed, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world. No longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. We are told that America is the land of laws, a nation built on laws. In point of fact, nothing could be further from the truth. America is run by people who are lawless. We have no law in America, and understand that. The law is whatever the powers that be in power happen to say it is today. Whatever they say it is, that's what the law is today. And it may change tomorrow. In 1933, the USA became bankrupt in the middle of a depression which was created because of the Federal Reserve Act. It is still bankrupt. This creature called the United States is not a nation at all, but merely a corporation which is in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This corporation was set up in England in 1868. The president of the USA is a president of a privately owned company that works under maritime admiralty law. All corporations have presidents for they work under maritime admiralty law. Just this fact alone should tell the average human being that we are not being told the truth. We are being manipulated. When USA became bankrupt, the banks asked the US government how are you going to pay? What is your collateral? The government answered back, the people is our collateral. Today on the back of US birth certificates are the markings of banks. In other words, the banks own the people. Minimum wage, what is it? To me it is the salary of a slave. A slave needs to be kept alive and healthy so that the work can be done. 
Today, I see people living a life where they work hard and long hours, but never get a paycheck that lasts them longer than towards the next paycheck. The modern slave takes care of his own slavery. The most hard-working slave is the one slave who believes he is free. Tell the truth, don't be bullshitting people. Like I say, there's enough bullshit as it is. There's enough bullshit as it is. In fact, there's just enough. Did you know that? There's just enough bullshit to hold things together in this country. Bullshit is the glue that binds us as a nation. Where would we be without our safe, familiar American bullshit? Land of the free, home of the brave, the American dream. All men are equal, justice is blind, the press is free, your vote counts. <laughs> Business is honest, the good guys win, the police are on your side, God is watching you, your standard of living will never decline, and everything is going to be just fine. The official national bullshit story. I call it the American Okie Doke. We are told we are free, but I do not feel that I'm free. We are ruled by the rule of force. Just look at what happens when you do not comply to your government, when you don't pay your taxes. Why do we keep playing the game? I mean, would you play Monopoly with other people when the banker is always cheating? That is what we do in real life. Why do we accept it? The whole court system, our whole monetary system, is based on ancient esoteric principles. Your body's energy, it's, it's a vessel. Your body's a vessel, you have blood vessels, etc. And you're traveling on the seas of commerce, not really because we're, we're on land, but they superimpose the world of Admiralty on us. And anyone can verify this because the Navy has surveyed all the land in the continental United States. And there's brass cap high watermarks in all the local towns and counties. So they, they've, in a let's pretend game, they said we're underwater right now. That's why they have jurisdiction of admiralty. And it's, unless you rebut that presumption of jurisdiction or the admiralty realm, it shall reign supreme. This monetary system is the direct cause for about 20,000 people dying every day from hunger. 20,000 people? Why? Well, today, our world is home to 6.7 billion people. Humans currently consume 20% more natural resources than the Earth can produce. The West comprises only 10% of the world populations, but consumes 50% percent of the world resources we produce and we release 80 percent of the world pollutants just this tells me how it can be that so many people suffer my lifestyle is a cause for this suffering and if only people in my society would allow themselves to feel the pain of this suffering and understand our connection to it, then we would no longer accept the pain caused by our lifestyle. War, poverty, corruption, hunger, misery, human suffering will not change in a monetary system. That is, there'll be very little significant change. It's going to take the redesign of our culture, our values, and it has to be related to the carrying capacity of the earth not some human opinion or some politician's notions of the way the world ought to be or some religious notions of the conduct of human affairs. In East Germany, before the Berlin Wall fell, the idea was that everyone should hold a job even though there weren't enough jobs for the people. One man worked at the crossroad controlling the street lights all day he sat there turning lights from red to green and back to red again all day when the workday ended he stood up pressed the automatic button and went home 
what a waste. It's not politicians that can solve problems. They have no technical capabilities. They don't know how to solve problems. Even if they were sincere, they don't know how to solve problems. It's the technicians that produce the desalinization plants. It's the technicians that give you electricity, that give you motor vehicles, that heat your house and cool it in the summertime. It's technology that solves problems, not politics. Politics cannot solve problems because they're not trained to do so. Technology is exactly the reason for Iceland's economy crashing in 2008. The fishing industry died the same day the fishing trawler fleet was replaced by fishing freeze trawlers in the 80s. Before that, the industry was kept alive because the trawlers fished around Iceland and brought the fish back to land to be worked on by people, packaging and freezing the product. The freezing trawlers made it possible to work the fish and freeze it on board with machines making the industry on land obsolete. This of course should have freed most Icelanders from the repetitive jobs and give everyone a comfortable life. But because of the quota regulations, the right to fish is in the hands of the few, keeping the populations in heavy debt to the bankers. Today, Iceland is in the process of losing its independence to the EU. And the question that's raised by politicians is how much will a project cost? The question is not how much will it cost? Do we have the resources? And we have the resources today to house everyone, build hospitals all over the world, build schools all over the world, the finest equipment and labs for teaching and doing medical research. So you see, we have all that, but we're in a monetary system. And in the monetary system, there's profit. A monetary system is a slave system. The money is the incentive for people to misuse their power. Many problems of this world derive from the money. Prostitution, theft, poaching, human trafficking, drug trafficking, politicians. It is very easy through money to exclude an individual from taking part in anything. So, what is the answer? Shit, hell that I know. I'm just seeing the problem. And the problem is a monumental one. And I think it will not be solved while we hold on to the ideas of possessions we have had created around us. But then I get reminded by this quote by Arthur Schopenhauer. All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. In fact, I had a vision of a way we could have no enemies ever again, if you're interested in this. Anybody interested in hearing this? <laughs> It's kind of an interesting theory, and all we have to do is make one decisive act, and we can rid the world of all our enemies at once. Here's what we do. You know all that money we spend on nuclear weapons and defense every year? Trillions of dollars. Instead, if we spent that money feeding and clothing the poor of the world, which it would pay for many times over, not one human being excluded, not one, we could, as one race, explore outer space together in peace forever. Thank you very much. You're great. John Lennon sang, Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. After some time wondering on this idea of a world without possessions, I found the Venus Project. I find it to be a brilliant idea. A world where our economy is resource-based instead of our modern growth-based economy. Shaq Fresco is one of the greatest thinkers of our time. He believes that technology can save us from this madness. I suggest you Google and study it. Already today, technology is taking away jobs. And when a machine takes my job in this growth-based economy, how can I support myself? 
How am I supposed to sell myself for money? Now America is inclined toward fascism. It has a propensity by its dominant philosophy and religion to uphold the fascist point of view. American industry is essentially a fascist institution. If you don't understand that, the minute you punch that time clock, you walk into a dictatorship. We're given notions about the respectability of work, and um, I really look at it as being paid slavery. They're brought up to believe that you shall earn your living by the sweat of your brow. That holds people back, freeing people from drudgery, repetitive jobs which make them ignorant. You rob them. In our society, that is a resource-based economy, machines free people. You see, we can't imagine that as we've never known that kind of world. What we want to do is to eliminate the causes of the problems, eliminate the processes that, that produce greed and bigotry and prejudice and um, people taking advantage of one another and elitism eliminating the need for prisons and welfare. We have always had these problems because we have always lived within scarcity and barter and monetary systems that produce scarcity. If you eradicate the conditions that generate what you call socially offensive behavior, it does not exist. The guy said, well, isn't that inborn? No, it's not. There is no human nature, there's human behavior, and that's always been changed throughout history. You're not born with bigotry and greed and corruption and hatred. You, you pick that up within the society. Is there a hidden hand? Is the world like this because someone wants it to be like this? Or is it just one monumental coincidence? What do you think?